Welcome and a good morning to Galaxy News on Star Set. You're watching Morning Express. I am Vuyo Mguelo. Gauteng Premier David Makura and the provincial government assess the economic impact that the lockdown has had on the province. While Makura announced yesterday at the Gauteng Command Council briefing that 90% of people that were tracking have now been located and tested. Makura further stated that the province is planning to strengthen their public health care our system by expanding infrastructure, medical equipment and more health professionals. And it has recently come to light that 56 people were traveling from the Western Cape to the Eastern Cape have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Tsitsikama and Baden borders between Western and the Eastern Cape, while South Africans have been allowed interprovincial travel as part of the Level 4 lockdown regulations with a seven-day grace period ending last night. The Eastern Cape Health Department said over 2,000 people entering the province from the Western Cape had now been tested and over 29,000 have been screened. The Western Cape remains the epicenter of the country's pandemic and this poses a concern to the health department. While the health MEC Cindy Sokomba said the, that having so many people who have tested positive for COVID-19 coming to the Eastern Cape undermines the good work that has been done by the province. Let's listen in to the song clip. It's a, it's a, it's a devastating result given the fact that when these people came into the province, we were not aware. We suddenly were seeing a border swamped with people. And when we started to go back to check as to what is happening, we were informed that these are the people that were released from farm workers, from service in particular. And at the time they came, we could not have any quarantine area that would have accepted or been enough for such big numbers. We, however, tried. We put some in the Fish River and we put some in Pequene. But when we found that we are, we are actually lost with space, we started to devise that we take their IDs, we take their addresses, we check their numbers and everything else and release them up testing. However, release them with guidelines of ensuring that they have masks, ensuring that they take it themselves as PUIs. We are now getting the taking back of such results. And as we get those results, as the last group was tested by the fourth batch that we're getting, we are now searching the results. So the areas is guided by their IDs, is guided by their addresses and numbers, so that our tracers can then get to them, get to talk to them, to go first relay the results, secondly, to immediately get on to any other contacts that they had because we are not sure whether they, they, they really actually kept the guidelines that they were given. And a Morning Express goes to a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking to Mpo Moko Ngawo, who is the Secretary General of the South African Cabin Crew. I dive deep into the web for all the news and information that I can grab so that you at home can stay entertained and informed by our five-star studded crew. Galaxy News is distinctly rooted in your location to bring you the lowdown on all the spiciest news in town. We make it our business to bring you news in time because it is your business that makes news each time. From Galaxy News. Woo! For unbiased, uncensored news updates, rely on Galaxy News. We are fearless. 
zero favor and zero fiction. We are the bridge that connects you from the rural to the urban. From Times Square to Mary Fitzgerald Square, we're sure to give you the hottest stories from all four corners of the globe. Bringing the latest news on business trends at the speed of light and transporting you to a world unseen. Now so we come for I go enter Lagos, the Zanga, inside Zanga for Lagos. From the port room to the fan part and to the floor. Open canal, this what you saw scope in for us. Sources at the ranks, banks and all places buzzing with action. Sports, business, politics, your entertainment, fashion trends. We're talking of breaking news, exclusive and certainly the hottest stories in town. For Galaxy News, I am Buyo Mguelo. Now me be this your boy, Osilama Otonu. Itabahen Kato from Galaxy News. I am Dr. Mkampanyani from Galaxy News. I am Susanda Nomosaka Kwabe Kuto for Galaxy UN. Spice Galimtina. And uh, welcome back to Morning Express. Now the judgment has been reserved in the Labour Court in the case brought by Workers' Union NUMSA as well as the South African Cabin Crew Association against SAA. The unions attempted to stop retrenchments at the airline. This all in a bid to ask the court to declare the retrenchment notices as unlawful since the rescue plan has not been seen by unions. Now, however, business rec rescue petitioners have given all workers at the SAA until next week to accept compensation packages. The Secretary General of South African Cabin Crew joins me right now in studio, Umpo Moigangwa. Welcome, sir, and thank you for joining us, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, and a very good morning to you. Now, we, were, we as the viewers would like to know where to from here, looking at that um, also still the, the, the union is still working to fight their retrenchments, and, and what is happening right now? What's happening right now, I think it's very important as the South African Cabin Crew Association is that before the yesterday's sitting of the court, we did challenge the BRP of not following their processes regarding retrenchment. Mm. They denied that in their answering affidavit, and they made a promise, and the judgment said that if there is any retrenchment, we'll have to have a business plan. A mm -hmm. business plan will be able to come up with a structure for the business model for the SAA up to date. We mm -hmm. have not received that. Mm -hmm. Hence, we had to go to court yesterday and we are waiting for the judgment. Mm. Now, has there anything or any in, uh, communication with, uh, uh, between NUMSA, between you guys, uh, with the company when it comes to at this time, because workers are, are suffering at this time. There's no income coming in. And also there's the, the, the thing of there will be some that will not be getting packages at this point. Has that been resolved? What has been resolved is that the mandates that we got from our members, uh, Saka Numza, we mm -hmm. don't believe that retrenchment must take place mm -hmm. and we are telling our members they must not sign mm -hmm. because even if they take that retrenchment, the BRP itself does not have the money to pay their employees exactly. their set amount and it is based on selling assets and which the government is very clear on that, that no South African assets will be sold mm -hmm. and as a union, we, are, we don't believe that is the route is to the take. Route but to there's other platforms that we are sitting in and it's during the COVID, it levels the ground to, for all stakeholders mm -hmm. to sit together yeah. in the interest of uh, South African okay. Airways. Mm -hmm. And there won't be any benchmarking that can be done with other airlines internationally. We have to come up with our own unique mm -hmm. uh, strategy that will carry us beyond mm -hmm. above this issue. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the, the that there's there's other uh, channels that you guys are looking to go to or approach, but then the pandemic is kind of restricting you guys because you can't sit down and, and and table out your 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 cries out when it comes to this matter. What are you looking to do now? Are you looking to? get any help from the government also because i think they need to involve themselves when it comes to making sure that the workers do get these packages should saa really shut down yes what we do have in the system is that you have the business rescue that is there and their main their main uh, mandate is to rescue south mm -hmm. african airways mm -hmm. and what they've done they've shut down all stakeholders they don't listen to the stakeholders mm -hmm. according to the company's acts they have got every right to do what they want to a certain extent. But now what we're seeing is that they do not consult with any stakeholders. Mm. And this has caught, up, has caught up with them because 
As Saka Numsa, we've been very clear in terms of the appointment of the BRP. But something that is very progressive and that we are very firm on, we as Saka Numsa, we are able to work with people who are willing to work. Mm -hmm. That has always been our cry, to say that we cannot have state-owned companies that are mismanaged. Mm -hmm. And you look now with yesterday, day before yesterday, with the Pravin uh, Godan Minister, God, yeah. mm -hmm. he was very clear to say that I am able to give you the money, but account for it. Till today, Til today, the BRPs has are an not transparent mm -hmm. regarding the books. So we cannot have a situation where people demand money and they cannot account for the money. Mm. And further than that, we've done special flights where to other countries, literally a single flight can be able to pay like 200 million mm. and nobody is accounting for that. For so there's no accountability on that area. Mm -hmm. And that is very, it's a concern to have people who are incompetent. Yeah. Mr. Mukangwa, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. That was the Secretary General of the South African Cabin Crew Association. As you have heard him continuing and emphasizing that accountability seems to be the problem when it comes to these matters right now. But other than that, we will quickly go to a short break. More news follow after this. I dive deep into the web for all the news and information that I can grab so that you at home can stay entertained and informed by our five-star studded crew. Galaxy News is distinctly rooted in your location to bring you the lowdown on all the spiciest news in town. We make it our business to bring you news in time because it is your business that makes news each time. From Galaxy News. Woo! For unbiased, uncensored news updates, rely on Galaxy News. We are fearless, zero favor, and zero fiction. We are the bridge that connects you from the rural to the urban. From Times Square to Mary Fitzgerald Square, we're sure to give you the hottest stories from all four corners of the globe. Bringing the latest news on business trends at the speed of light and transporting you to a world unseen. Now, so we come fly, go enter Lagos, the Zanga, inside Zanga for Lagos. From the boardroom to the fan part and to the floor. Open canal, Nisvakia Salskop in Saras. Sources at the ranks, banks, and all places buzzing with action. Sports, business, politics, your entertainment, fashion trends. We're talking of breaking news, exclusive, and certainly the hottest stories in town. For Galaxy News, I am Vuyo Mguelo. Namibi, this is your boy, Osila Maotonu. Itawakhen Kato from Galaxy News. I am Kato Mkampanyani from Galaxy News. I am Susanda Nomosaka Kwabe Kuto for Galaxy UN. As Bayes Kalem Tina. And welcome back to Morning Express. Remember, you're still tuned to Galaxy News on Star Set, and I am Biolo Tumguelo. Now, we are currently joined by Councillor of Alexandria Township, Mr. Tefora Mapadu, who's going to give us more on the inside of Colin Cos's case. Now, remember, Colin was uh, assaulted uh, by the South African Police Services and also the soldiers of South Africa that were sent out to actually help the South African citizens. Many have actually took out to social media um, a crime 
crying out and pledging that the South African government that he must actually talk to these people that their work is to help South Africans and not abuse um, these matters. Else. But uh, um, Mr. Defu is going to give us more on that story and he will elaborate on how far is the Koza family being helped by the South African government. Other than that, if you know anything, if you know any stories like this, similar to this in your area, do go to our social media, do go to our website and also say out your crowds because we are here to listen to you guys, to listen to your views and the things that you experience on the ground. And now, as for that, let's listen to the sound clip. Colin Koza died on April 10 as he was manhandled and assaulted by soldiers during a lockdown operation in the township of Alexandra. It is alleged that he was poured with beer on top of his head and on his body. One member of the South African National Defense Force held his hand behind his back while the other choked him, slammed him against the cement wall, hit him with the butt of the machine gun, kicked, slapped him, punched him on his face, on his stomach as well as his ribs and slammed him against the steel gate. When Koza was taken to his house, he presented signs such as vomiting, losing speech and progressively lost his ability to walk and had to be rested in bed. When emergency services arrived later that day, they declared Koza dead. Weeks ago, the Koza family presented President Cyril Ramaphosa with a letter demanding financial compensation for loss of support, trauma, shock, psychological assistance, and any medical expenses they may have incurred relating to Koza's death. The case of the Alexandra man, Colin Koza, who was allegedly killed by soldiers after he was accused of violating lockdown regulations, is being heard at the Pretoria with that, as you have heard, and I did promise you earlier that Mr. Defo is uh, joining me. Now, Mr. Uh, I mean, sorry, Mr. Uh, Defo, has been justice so far been saved for the Koza family? I think with the court case taking place right now, um, it's a step in the right direction that the family can get closure around this issue that is... Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, be felt the, mm -hmm. the cause of family, yes. Has uh, any, any, anything been done by the government to help or let's say to go and visit the, the cause of family to try and or maybe to get them counselling? Also, there's neighbours that saw all these things. I mean, everyone who is surrounded by um, the cause of family needs to get at least counselling or someone to go and talk. Has that been done? No, the only people that um, came or visited the family was the... Um, Chaplain General of the SANDF, mm -hmm. but besides that, um, nobody has pitched up. I know through the lawyers and our assistants, um, they have had counselling, trauma counselling, mm. uh, so that they get through um, the trauma that they are facing right now. Now, we know that oh, Mr. Koza uh, was the breadwinner of the family. He was the one who was taking care of his family. Um, if, if, if you know anything, how are they coping right now at these times of pandemic? I mean, there's also an issue of food parcels in and around uh, for Alexandra, and I'm going to need to bring you in, in there. Are they receiving their help when it comes to food parcels? I mean, since they've lost their breadwinner at the hands of the South African National Defense Force, those people, I'm not saying that they are better, but I'm saying there should have been a priority because they've lost a breadwinner they've lost someone who was taking care of their, uh, taking care of their family is that being done and uh, what can be done to help the cause of family thankfully the the the, the wife to mr cause a strong support uh, family mm. structure that is, is supporting them and no food parcels has come um so yeah, uh, the mm. government and everything have not assisted them in any way. Mm. So the issue is that I've been trying to help them out. Um, other interested parties have been trying to, to assist them to as assist. well. So, but mm. in terms of the government side, nothing has been nothing done to date. Done. And that is the unfortunate part about this because they should be showing remorse and also going to the family and saying mm -hmm. uh, a mistake was done, but we want to assist, but none of that is happening. So. Yeah, the strong uh, family structure, um, our support, and the lawyers and everybody who feels close mm. or, or wants to assist has come they through too. to assist. Mm. Yeah. Now, it is alleged that um, some councillors in the Alexandria area are accused of only giving out these food parcels um, to ANC supporters. <laughs> How is that <laughs> happening? <laughs> uh, no, that's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a story, a burning story mm. right now. 
And I know that uh, the Premier, David Makura, instructed all councillors that yes. they should stay away from food parcel distribution. So I'm not sure how are they, how are they allo involved? allocating party members because they're not supposed to be mm -hmm. involved in any food parcels. But I saw the recent news articles uh, going around around mm. one of the councillors in Alex. And I think there was a bit of a mis misunderstanding around uh, the NGO the that NGOs. came to support. Uh, and Apparently she they were chased away or they were not accepting anything from the NGOs, which is very ridiculous because these are the people that you need to um, uh, to help out. Everyone is actually waiting. We've been hearing complaints from Cape Town all over South Africa right now at this moment that everyone is in need of these food parcels. You know, the, the, unfortunate part, um, the unfortunate part is that there's no clear coordination between government and these and NGOs. These age, yes. So you find that... Um, the same family, there's duplication mm -hmm. in, in the distribution of food parcel. So the councillor wanted to know about who are these beneficiaries so that we can at least align that those who have not benefited um, can benefit can because benefit. we don't want a duplication, a repeat of one family getting two, three, four food parcels. So I think government needs to tighten up on that issue of uh, coordination mm. around food parcels because um, the four comes gives to you. Give to, mm -hmm. Government comes, they give to you. Some other NGO comes, they give to you. So people it see or look people. at it as, uh, no, that's the councillor's friend. He's mm -hmm. getting so much. <laughs> so I think we need to clarify and yeah. deal with that yeah. issue because there are many people who have not received food parcel and the situation is bad out there. So what we need to do is to make sure that everybody gets to, to receive this relief that mm. the government is trying to give to our people. Okay. Well, Mr. Defu, thank you so much for that insight. We do appreciate your time. Um, okay. That was Mr. Defu Ra Ra Pandu uh, giving us uh, more insight on the Collins uh, co Collins Acosta's case and also the food distribution um, issue that is happening in the area of uh, Alexandra. Um, it seems like uh, uh, producers right there at the mm -hmm. back are trying to continue because it is something that we might as well take it further. So now we know there's also the Sasa grant payments that also has been said, or rather not yet declared, that it will be running smooth. But we're going to quickly go to a short break. When we come back, more of the stories come. I dive deep into the web for all the news and information that I can grab so that you at home can stay entertained and informed by our five-star studded crew. Galaxy News is distinctly rooted in your location to bring you the lowdown on all the spiciest news in town. We make it our business to bring you news in time because it is your business that makes news each time. And welcome back to Galaxy News. You're watching a Morning Express on Star Set. Now, nearly 2,000 jobs may have been affected should SAB retrench. The South African breweries state that it remains a conflicted under lockdown as the sale and distribution of alcohol is strictly prohibited. The brewery further states that because it is unable to transport its stock, it will be forced to destroy over 130 million litres of beer, and this might possibly lead to job losses. I mean, they might as well have people that can drink those litters. Now the brewery has not initiated any brewing since the start of the lockdown and they have been fermenting and bottling alcohol as part of the wind down in operation but now has the facility to reach its legal capacity it poses a concern the SAB that about 2,000 people may lose their job due to lockdown prohibits on alcohol let's take a look at this video 
So yes, indeed, we've been actively engaging with government on the matter. As you may recall, when the president announced uh, the national lockdown on the 23rd of March, SAB immediately stopped uh, making any new brews. This effectively meant that we had to start a process that was agreed with the DTI of an orderly wind down to protect our assets and our inventory. However, Devon, as you may now know, we find ourselves in a very difficult situation where we have 132 million liters of beers in our tank, which roughly equates to 400 million bottles of beer that we are unable to transport and safely store um, in light of the current lockdown regulations. And to end sports news, off for 29-year-old Orlando Pirates midfielder Ben Mutswari caused a shockwave on Thursday afternoon as he tested positive for COVID-19. This has after having flu-like symptoms last week. The midfielder started his football journey in 2013 while on trial at Bidvis Vist and joined Orlando Pirates in 2018. Fans of the much-loved midfielder went to social media and sent get well soon messages. Mutswari has been the first PSL player to test positive for COVID-19. The South African footballer and the club's legend Edward Mortale sent a motivating message to the 2016 and 17 PSL title winning midfielder, urging him to remain calm and focus on recovering. Orlando Pirates states that the player is asymptomatic and is currently in isolation at his home for the next 14 days. He will need to test negative before he is cleared to play again. The National Health Insurance has been notified of the case by the club. The player has been advised to notify the doctors of all the people who he has been in contact with. Let's take a look at the Orlando Pirates psychologist's words of encouragement to the Sorkas fraternity as a whole. Coronavirus is here. It's a reality that you cannot run away from. It does not discriminate. It affects young and old, male, female, educated or not educated. And it has brought with it a serious, serious um, psychological turmoil. People are anxious. People worry. There's a lot of paranoia around, particularly around the issue of death. I want to reassure you that having tested positive for COVID-19 doesn't mean that you're going to die. We know of people like Wendate Zuelin Zimavavi, Wendate Minshui, who were able to recover from this coronavirus. So take courage, accept support when it's being offered to you, seek psychological counseling to allay your anxieties, and let us continue to adhere to the rules surrounding the issue of COVID-19, social isolation, washing of hands, sanitizing, and staying at home. To all those that have been affected and infected, please know that this too shall pass. We just need to work together in defeating this gauge of coronavirus. Hey, we send our uh, get well soon to Mr. Ben Mutswari. As uh, we know, we have a producer who really loves Orlando Pirates. And also, I know a lot of South Africans will not be happy as a lot of liters of alcohol will be thrown away. But on a light side of the note, it is a Mother's Day weekend. How are you going to celebrate your Mother's Day under this pandemic? Go to our website and all our social media platforms. Share with us how you're going to be loving your mother differently this time. From myself and the Morning Express team, we love you and happy Friday.